6.1c simplifying each expression using properties. We're going to begin with a real quick review of some of the properties. The commutative property, well that says that we can switch the order. In addition, we just change the order of the add-ins. In multiplication, we can change the order of the products. We'll get the same answer. The associative property, that's known as the grouping property, it says that we can regroup numbers in addition or multiplication, and we'll get the same answer. The distributive property, that's the one I always teach with the mother bird. We distribute the 4 to the 2 and get 4 times 2. It's added to 4 times 1, and we can do it over subtraction where we do 4 times 2 minus 4 times 1. A constant is a value that does not change. So to rent a garden tiller, Bob had to pay a $100 deposit plus $20 per day. So we're going to let D equal the number of days. So the rental fee is $20 times the number of days that he has the tiller plus that $100 deposit. Because this number doesn't change, that is the constant. A three-day rental would be $20 times three days, that would be $60 plus the $100. $100 in this case is the constant. It's a value that does not change. To simplify this algebraic expression, we start by using the distributive property to distribute this negative 4. We distribute it to the 9x within the parentheses, and we distribute it to the positive 6 within the parentheses. We get 6, we have a positive 9 and a negative 4, so that's going to give us a negative 36x, and we get a negative 24. Now, we rewrite the subtraction as adding the opposite to set up to use the commutative property of addition. Instead of doing 6 minus negative 36, we put 6 plus a negative 36 in parentheses. Instead of minus 24, we put plus a negative 24. By adding the opposite, it helps us set up to use the commutative property of addition because the commutative property does not work for subtraction. Now we can use that commutative property of addition to add like terms. We've got the like terms of 6 and negative 24. We can add 6 plus negative 24 and get a negative 18. And we're adding a negative 36x. Now we need to simplify it. We can simplify this as negative 18 minus 36x. Now, this is as far as we can go for simplifying. We have two unlike terms that can't be combined. Negative 18 represents 18 units to the left of 0 on a number line, and negative 36x can represent any product of negative 36 and an unknown amount x. Negative 18 minus 36x does not equal negative 54x. We can't combine these unlike terms. This one does not have a variable, and this one does. If x was equal to 2, we would have negative 18 minus 36 times 2. And the order of operations tells us to do multiplication first, so we would do negative 36 times 2. 2, and that's a positive 2. We have a negative 36 times a positive 2 that would give us a negative 72. So we would have a negative 18 plus a negative 72. That would give us a negative 90. Now this is only if x is equal to 2. If we mistakenly combine the unlike terms as negative 54x and x was equal to 2, we'd have negative 54 times 2, which is equal to negative 108. That's not negative 90. We don't combine unlike terms if we don't know the value of the variable. And in this problem, we don't know the value of x. So the only thing we can do is simplify it as negative 18 minus 
36x. That's as far as we can go with simplifying. This expression, negative 6a minus 1 fourth times negative 1 half minus 2 thirds a plus 8, the first thing we do is use the distributive property to distribute this negative 1 fourth. We distribute it to the negative 1 half, to the negative 2 thirds a, and to the positive 8. The 6a is going to be our constant. It's going to stay the same all the way down. So negative 1 fourth times a negative 1 half. We have a negative times a negative, so that's going to make a positive, isn't it? And we multiply straight across with fractions, so we have 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 times 2 is 8. We have a positive 1 eighth. Now we do negative 1 fourth times negative 2 thirds a. We have 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 3 is 12. We have a negative times a negative, so we have a positive 2 twelfths a. We have a negative 1 fourth times a positive 8. That's going to give us a negative, unlike signs, negative 8 fourths. Now we can simplify the fractions. 2 twelfths a is 1 sixth a. And 8 fourths, well that's a 2, so we have a minus 2 here. We need to rewrite the subtraction as adding the opposite to be able to use the commutative property of addition because subtraction is not commutative. So this minus needs to become a plus negative 2. Now the next thing we do is use the commutative property of addition to put the like terms next to each other. So we have a negative 6a and a plus 1 6 a. We put them together using the commutative property of addition and we have our plus 1 eighth plus our negative 2. The next thing we do is use the associative property of addition to combine the like terms. We do the negative 6a plus 1 6 a. That's going to give us a negative 5 and 5 6 a. And we add 1 eighth plus a negative 2. That's going to give us a negative 1 and 7 eighths. We use the sign of the greater absolute value. So if we're adding a positive 1 eighth plus a negative 2, this negative 2 has a greater absolute value, doesn't it? So we're adding a positive to a negative, so we're going to use the sign of the greater absolute value, the negative, and we're going to find their difference, which is 1 and 7 eighths. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive, so Instead of writing plus negative 1 and 7 eighths, we can write minus 1 and 7 eighths. So do you remember in video 3.3c we learned that p minus q is equal to p plus a negative q? If not, I'll have this linked in the description so you can go back and look at it quickly and then catch up again. Let's try another one. Here's our expression 7y plus 2 tenths times 5 minus 10y plus 3. We use the distributive property and we distribute the 2 tenths to the 5 and to the negative 10y. Here's our constant 7y and we have one here too, don't we? This positive 3. So we drop down our 7y and we have 2 tenths times 5 that's going to give us one whole. And we have 2 tenths times a negative 10y that's going to give us a negative 2y and we have our plus 3. Now we have this subtraction symbol here and we want to use the commutative property so we have to add the opposite to set up to use the commutative property. So we have a plus negative 2y. Now we use the commutative property. We've got a 7y here and we're adding a negative 2y here so we move this one over with the commutative property and the 1 is going to come here and the 3 is going to come here. Now we use the associative property to regroup them to combine like terms. We have a 7y plus a negative 2y. Well, that gives us a 5y. And we're going to add a 1 plus 3, which is a 4. We have 5y plus 4. And that's as far as we can go simplifying this expression because we don't know the value of y. We're going to do one last one for those who need it. Our expression is 16 minus 4 times n plus 3. We start by using the distributive property and we distribute this negative 4 to the n, that's a positive n, and to the positive 3. 
we get 16 minus 4n minus 12. We have a negative 4 times a positive 3. That gives us a negative 12. Now we rewrite as adding the opposite to set up for using the commutative property. We have a minus sign here and a minus sign here. We turn it into 16 plus a negative 4n plus a negative 12. Now that we have all addition, we can use the commutative property and put this 16 together with this negative 12 because they're like terms. We can combine them. And that negative 4n is going to come back here. Now using the associative property, we put these together. We have 16 plus a negative 12. Well, that's a positive 4. And plus negative 4n. And adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive. So we have p minus q is equal to p plus a negative q from video 3.3c that we talked about before. That means this 4 plus negative 4n can be written as 4 minus 4n. It can be very confusing to simplify algebraic expressions. If for any reason you became confused during this video, it's no big deal to go back and watch it again and see what we did. I just hope the colors that I use help you to figure out what we did. Okay, that's another part finished. We're going to move on to factor algebraic expressions. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye!